Howdy, all! Welcome to Railroad Adventures with Kendall. And today's train trip is a fun look to the history of the Disneyland Railroad. It's gonna be a fun, magical journey. So let's get going. All aboard. The story of the Disneyland Railroad starts with the man himself, Walt Disney, who had always loved trains throughout his life. I think most everyone is fascinated by trains, including myself. Walt's love of trains began when he was a boy living in Marceline, Missouri, along the Asheton, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad. In fact, he wanted to grow up to be an engineer like his uncle, Mike Martin. Trains also played an important part in Walt's life. For example, Walt's first job was working as a news butch for the Missouri Pacific. And after Walt lost the copyright to Oswald the Lucky Rabbit in March 1928, he took the Santa Fe's California Limited back to Los Angeles. It was on board this train that he created the first initial sketches of Mickey Mouse. And despite the success of the Walt Disney Studios, Walt himself was overworking on new projects. And the nurse told him, he says, you're working too hard. You're coming down here on Saturday and Sundays and inspecting storyboards. You've got to relax. And he says, you know, that guy Kimball seems to be relaxed all the time. So in 1948, Walt invited Ward Kimball to come with him to the Chicago Railroad's Fair and later take a side trip to the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. Mr. Kimball was well known within the studio as a big rail enthusiast. In fact, he had a private three-foot gauge railroad in his backyard called the Grizzly Flats Railroad. Check out my video about the Grizzly Flats Railroad to learn more about it. Another rail fan within the Disney studio was Ollie Johnston. He operated his live steam railroad, the La Canada Valley, in his home at Flint Ridge, California. Inspired by Johnston's railroad and a model of Central Pacific 173 at famed rail historian Gerald Best's house, what will have the Lily Bell, named after his wife, Lillian Disney. And with that, the creation of the Carrollwood Pacific Railroad. Carrollwood Pacific would get its name from Carrollwood Drive, where the Disney home was at, in the Homby Hills neighborhood of Los Angeles. This little railroad looped around Yisnet Valley and included a large trestle bridge and two tunnels, one of which was underneath Lillian Disney's flower bed. Even as Walt had fun operating the Lily Bell or tinkering in his barn, he wanted something bigger. And with the planning and construction of Disneyland, he would get his wish. Even on the original concept of Mickey Mouse Park next to the Burbank Studio and the final concept for Disneyland, there was always a train circling around it. And in the end, two trains were built for the new Disneyland. A 19th century freight train led by an engine number one, the CK Holiday, that would depart from Frontierland, and the turn of the century passenger train led by engine number two, the EP Ripley, that would depart the Main Street Station. Originally, when the park was opened in 1955, the railroad was called the Santa Fe and Disneyland Railroad. This was a sponsored deal between the Asheton, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad and Disneyland. However, the sponsorship ended in 1974 over disagreements between the Santa Fe and Disney. Santa Fe and Disneyland passenger train EP Ripley now arriving on track number one from a trip around Walt Disney's Magic Kingdom. All six of these yellow coaches were built at the Walt Disney Studios in Burbank, California. 
If you would like to learn more about these coaches, check out my video about the Santa Margarita Ranch, home of the Pacific Coast Railroad, where four of these unique coaches have been in regular service. Anyway, despite the efficient service by both the freight and passenger trains, the rising number of guests within Disneyland prompted Disney to get another train for the Disneyland Railroad. The Disneyland Railroad is a sightseer's dream, for it circles the entire perimeter of Disneyland. So in 1957, Disney purchased a small old tank engine from 1894 at a Louisiana plantation for $1,500. That locomotive would enter service at Disneyland on March 28, 1958, as Santa Fe and Disneyland Railroad number no. three, Fred Gurley. Then a fourth locomotive was purchased for $2,000 in New Jersey. And despite a shipping mishap, it finally arrived in Los Angeles on June 19th, 1958. During the locomotive's rebuild, Ward Kimball suggested that its new look should be based around the Denver Rio Grande number no. one, Montezuma. This new locomotive will enter service on July 25th, 1959 as the Ernest S. Marsh. Over the years, all four engines will pull their respective trains around Disneyland. Then in 2005, Disneyland will get a brand new locomotive. This new engine was acquired by a deal made between Disney and Cedar Point. Disney would trade this never used tank engine at Walt Disney World for Cedar Point's smaller locomotive called Mod L. The new locomotive would become the Ward Kimball. As mentioned earlier, named after the Disney animator who played a big part in creating this wonderful railroad. The latest change to happen on the Disneyland Railroad occurred between 2016 and 2017 with the new rerouting of both the railroad and Rivers of America to accommodate the new Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland. And that leads us to today where we can experience the fun and excitement of riding the Disneyland Railroad. If you want to go for a ride, join us as we get on board the Disneyland Railroad. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. See you later and may your gifts bless the world. All aboard!